Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the meal this morning. Got something a little different today. Uh, it's not unusual. It's uh, very common. Not something Matthew and I like to do a lot of, but we have to. Uh, we're gonna fold the meal up this morning, pull it out the door. We gotta clean up all this mess in the floor. It's been, gosh, it's been at least a month since we pulled the meal out and cleaned up, but uh, we was kind of pushing it off till today because we got a customer order we got to got to work on uh they need uh somewhere around 50 60 one by tens eight foot long pine boards we're going to run them through the grizzly planer over here plane them down to three quarter of an inch but to uh to get that out and use it we need to get the mill out if we're going to get the mill out we might as well clean the floor up so it's kind of a series of events here it's not a bad thing i like to get it out every three or four weeks and clean the floor up get up all the bark and the mulch and the limbs and everything that falls off the trees as we're trying to to mill them but uh we call, we keep calling this the dirty side of saw milling because it is it's something's got to be done you know it's not the the glamorous glamorous side of milling up uh logs into beautiful lumber but it just comes along with it but uh that's gonna be the gist of it today shovel it rinse and repeat <laughs> but we appreciate you tuning in guys and uh let's get to work First thing we gotta do to get the uh, sawmill out of here, we gotta fold it up, put it in its uh, travel configuration. It's something you guys are mobile milling, you do it all the time. Uh, we'll go through the steps here. I gotta raise the, uh, the lift arms on the side, the left side, all the way to the vertical position. We'll take our log turner and push it all the way to the left in the up position. Then we'll raise our log lift all the way up clip it together and then the legs will actually back themselves up to the long lift then we can uh raise all the legs or i'll set the set the head down on the pins and then raise all the legs and it's ready to pull out of here so let's do it Okay, as you can see, I raised the uh, the log lift legs up. I will chain that to the turning arm and then reverse the flow on the hydraulics and it will just pull the legs right up off the ground. Okay, I stopped the carriage where it's at because there's two uh, legs that actually sit right underneath the carriage and they're easier to get up now before you set that head rig all the way down on it. But uh, lift them up and we'll drop the head rig.
last two legs are right here in front of the the uh, <coughs> lug arms. Get those up and uh, we'll hook the tractor to it. And ease it out in the yard. Okay, that's it. We got it moved out. Now comes the, the less enjoyable part. We're going to scoop up all this mess in the floor and put it in our box. Get rid of it, but it is part of it. There's nothing. It's nice when you get done. The floor is good and clean. And work feels better. So let's get to it. dirty part now we got it all cleaned up Matthew got it hauled away as you can see the the floor is a lot nicer now all that debris picked up this comes along with the game you play you know you make a mess and every now and then you got to clean it up but uh we got our planer sitting out here we're gonna go over here and dig out these boards we need and then uh we'll get to planing those so hang on we'll be right back okay guys uh we got the floor cleaned up. We got our planer set up. We had to go over here and uh, move some lumber to get to the, this stack of kiln dried uh, one to 10 pines. We're gonna run those through. We need 53, 55 good ones. And uh, it has to be one side clear, but we're gonna try to clear both sides anyway. So it's just work. And Matthew and I are gonna stand here and do it. We appreciate you watching though. Thanks guys. seen us run those first couple boards a couple times we were trying to find an average height to run all the boards at and that first board is a lot thicker than the rest of them.
first pass, I'm flipping them over to where the bottom side is on top. So on the next pass, all he has to do is pick it up and put it right through the planer and don't have to think about which side he needs to run. stacking those extra boards over there in the corner. The customer that we're running all this for only wanted 1x10s, so anything that was a 6 or an 8 we put off over in the corner and we'll put it back onto a pile at the end. And finished up the first run of planning. It took us maybe 35 minutes to 40 minutes to get it done. Now we're on to the second pass. As I get through the planer on their second pass, you will see that I flip them back and forth. I'm looking for the side that either needs to be planed to make it look like a good board, 
or just deciding which side actually needs playing the game to make it the best board I possibly can. Because we only need one side to be perfectly clear, but we'd prefer to get two if we could. Finished running the second side. We're getting ready to turn it over and run the third time, and that'll be it. It'll be down to the three quarter inch board. Uh, Matthew's gonna put them on the saw horses over here. We'll go a few layers, put a sticker in there, a few more sticker, then we'll band it all together. It'll be done. Uh, we planned about four extra boards. We're gonna keep them for a little shelf project we need. Matthew will pick out the, the worst four of the bunch, and we'll keep those. So. It's about lunchtime, so we're going to hurry right on through this. The boards that you see me setting aside for our shelf project we're going to do later on, they're boards that won't make a good 8-foot board because they're doty on one end or the other and we don't want to give those to the customer. The reason you're seeing us put stickers back into this pile once we're done planing it is so that when we pick it up with the tractor, it won't crumble in on itself. Okay, thanks guys. If you're still watching, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, Matthew and I finished up these 53 one by 10s uh, Let's talk about one thing here. Uh, our Grizzly planer over here. If you don't have a big planer at your sawmill shop, I highly suggest you invest in one. It's a great tool, adds great uh, benefit to the product you make. Uh, lot, not every customer is going to have a planer. It's just a little added value value you can give to your wood this customer is uh, doing a big great room in their house uh, same one that got all that popper a few weeks ago this is going to finish them up what they're wanting to do uh, today we cleaned the shop up not something we enjoy doing but it's got to be done occasionally and then we run this wood for the customer we're going to band it up and it'll be ready to go but I believe that's going to do it for today's video. If you got any questions, comments, please leave them below. We, uh, we read everyone. We answer everyone. And if you would, like, subscribe, and share. 
We'll see you back at the mill. Thank you for watching. Here's a video selection and a playlist suggestion. Click here to subscribe for more great content. We'll see you at the mill.